Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Before we get started with worship, two public service announcements. A, uh, the bathrooms are on the other side of that wall, so you go over that way. Uh, and B, there is a nursery over there for any children who get overly exuberant, though I will remind you that it always annoys the parents more than it annoys any of us. And I've got a microphone, so I'm not worried at all. So children are always welcome, and we love the sound of children. So uh, I invite you to bow your heads and let's begin this time of worship with a word of prayer. Gracious God, with joy and thanksgiving we gather as your people. We have come to hear again the timeless story of Christ's birth. In the excitement of this night, quiet our hearts that we might know the peace and fullness of this holy time. Shine, O light, in the darkness of our world. Shine, sing, O angels, in the stillness of our hearts. Glory to God in the highest on earth. Peace among those God favors. This we pray in the name of the child of Bethlehem. Amen. Our opening hymn is Joy to the World. Please stand and join with me as we sing. And in those days, the decree went out from Emperor Augustus that all the world should be registered. This was the first registration and was taken while Quintius was governor of Syria. All went to their own towns to be registered. Joseph also went from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to Judah to the city of David called Bethlehem because he was a descendant from the house and family of David. He went to be registered with Mary, to whom he was engaged, and who was expecting a child, and she gave birth to her firstborn son, and wrapped him in bands of cloth, and laid him in a manger, because there was no place for them in the inn. And in this region there were shepherds living in the fields, keeping watch over their flocks by night. Then the angel of the Lord stood before them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid, for see, I bring you good news of great joy for all people. 
to you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, who is the Messiah, the Lord. This will be a sign to you. You will find the child wrapped in bands of cloth and lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of heavenly hosts praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest heaven and on earth peace among those whom he favors. Let's take our hymnal again and turn to hymn number 245. Or just look forward. One page. <laughs> tonight to celebrate the birth of a child, a child that we proclaim to be fully human and fully divine, a mystery that we call the Incarnation. It is indeed a mystery that Christians have been trying to understand for centuries. How does it work for someone to be fully human and fully divine? Why does it happen? And we have had many answers over the years. The most succinct answer is an answer given by St. Anselm of Canterbury back in 1097, and here's how he put it. God became like humanity so that humanity could become like God. Right, that's the logic of it. God became hum human 
so that humanity could become like God. If we know God best as Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, this sort of divine family, perfectly distinct but altogether one, that God came so that we could also be like this, that we could over time become uh, always distinct but in a community that is holy, and, and it's, it's, that's the purpose, right? God became human so that humanity could become like him. And that's perfectly logical, easy to explain, and does kind of miss a lot of what really matters about the evening. Because it doesn't answer this question. Was Jesus excited about this? Was Jesus excited about Christmas? Was Jesus dragging his feet? Man, do I have to do this? Right, do I have to be born? Do I have to? Did Jesus come to earth like a plumber to have you deal with someone else's awkwardness and, and weird? Like, do I have to go deal with that? Or was Jesus excited? I get to go deal with this. I get to go to this. I get to go. Did Jesus come to, to deal with something that was awkward? Or did Jesus run towards this excited, chomping at the, at the bit, ready to get there as soon as possible? Th think about what a difference that makes and who, who God is. Right? Well, think about what, what kind of difference that, that makes. Another way to think about this uh, question is if that humanity had never messed up, if, if there was no need for forgiveness, if there was no need for Jesus to stay from the cross, Father, forgive them, for they do not know what they do, would Christmas still have happened? Right? Would it be like Jesus saying, man, poof, dodge that bullet, or would Jesus have come anyways? I, I think he would have come. I don't think there's anything that could have stopped Jesus from coming to be with us. I think it was going to happen no matter what, because it, com because it flows out of the nature of who God is, the want to be with us. Jesus comes and there's nothing that could have stopped him. Jesus did not come to earth to deal with someone else's mess. Jesus came as a long lost family member willing to go to any length to be with us. Right? And if you need just to think through what that means for us, what that looks like, how many hours have you been willing to drive in your life to be with family? How much hassle at t with the TSA? How many plane flights have you taken to be with family? Now, there have been times when it has taken me longer to drive than I was able to be there with family. But I did it, right? And we do that. We, we will drive uncounted hours and deal with any sort of hassle so that when it comes to these holiest days of the year, these days where we can push everything else aside and just be with people. We want to be with certain people. We want to be with family. And we'll go to almost any length to make it happen. I, I think that's the drive that we see. I think our drive to be with people is rooted in the, in the drive that we see in Jesus here. He wants to be with us and there is nothing that could have happened that would have stopped him. He came so that he could be... Jesus came, like the logic of it still holds, like Jesus came to be with us, to be human, so that we could become more like him, and, and that's logical and defensible and sound and all of that. But I think it misses the joy of the night, that this is not a, jo this is not a night where Jesus was dreading it. This was a night that Jesus was excited about it, because he got to come and be with us. Thanks be to God. Amen. I invite you to stand and join with me as we confess our faith together using the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he rose from the dead, he ascended into heaven, and sitteth at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. You may be seated. We're going to come to the table in just a minute, and it's important to, for everyone to hear clearly that this is an open table. 
You are welcome at this table always, for it is Christ's table. And he invites to this table everyone who loves him, who seeks to live at peace with each other and repents of their sin. And that you are here tonight is an act of your love. That just leaves the confession and, and the peacemaking. And so let's just take a moment of honesty with ourselves to confess. Do the holidays always bring out the best in you? Yep. I, I can't say that during the holidays I somehow transform into the perfect pastor, father, husband, son. Like, I'm not. The pressure. You know. I want you to hear that even in those moments where we have fallen and we have fallen short of that, that Christ died for us while we, while we were yet sinners, and this proves God's love towards us. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. Glory to God. Amen. Now as a peacemaking and a forgiving family, I invite you to stand up and love on each other. Be family. Handshakes, hugs. Be at peace with each other this evening. The usual Sundays, I give the nice subtle cue, it's time to move on by holding up the offering plates. I'm not going to do that tonight, so I'll just start talking. A question for you to, to think. You don't have to respond out loud, because I think we all know the answer. As a parent of a newborn child, how much hope do you need? All right. How much hope? You know that you're not going to get a full night's sleep anytime for a while. Right? You know that things aren't going to, like, you're, you're going to, tr it's challenging to cope with this new situation because even if you've had a child before, a second one and a third and a fourth, everyone's a new level of challenge. Right? So the hope that we have is not that everything is going to be fixed. Everything is going to be worked out and taken care of tomorrow. The hope is that with a newborn child, you will begin this journey called life together. And that will lead somewhere. And that as with any journey, it will have ups and downs, but you will take it together. Right. Tonight we name this hope, this hope that is rooted in the birth of a child, and this, this hope that the darkness cannot and will not overcome it, and we follow this light, this journey, uh, and it has its ups and downs. Like, to be Christian, to come to this table, is not to say that everything is going to be peachy from here on out. What it is to say is that we follow this child and we're taking a journey, and we know where we're headed, towards the kingdom of God, and it will have ups and downs, but we have food for the road. Right? That, that, in many ways, is what this is. When Jesus gathers his disciples, they've already been on quite the journey, and they will continue to be on that journey, the journey that we are on, following this son. Jesus took the bread at that table, and he broke it, and he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body. It is broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And when the supper was over, he took the cup. He blessed it. And he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and drink, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you eat this meal in remembrance of me. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we pray that you would send your spirit upon this gift, that this bread, that this cup might be for us the body and blood of your Son and our Lord Jesus Christ. That as we come to this table, we might have food for the road, hope that we can taste and eat and drink that will sustain us in the journeys that are yet to come as we follow your newborn Son. We pray this in the name of your Son and our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. There is one other time during the church year we talk about a whole bunch of fire. That's during Pentecost. The light that begins this night, one small light, by the end of the Gospels, we see that as multiple people light on fire, they go forth and the church is born and it transforms the world. And so to gather and to light candles is, to me, always a sign of hope that tomorrow these flames might be brighter, 
that tomorrow, as more people are, are burning with this light, that things can be changed. We are heading towards the kingdom of God that is to come. All will be made right and true. And all begins with a small light in the dark of a night. Take this light and go forth into a world of darkness that needs a little bit of light now, doesn't it? Go forth now in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Merry Christmas. Amen. Merry Christmas.